my story is similar to most everybody else's. I had a uh, normal family, normal upbringing, but somewhere a certain sense of inadequacy didn't fit in. Um, something was just a little bit askew, and I found other things that worked and made me feel better about myself. And eventually I did too much of the same things for too long, and it caught up with me. There was no turning the clock back. And I knew that uh, at that point I was an alcoholic and an addict. If I would stop or if uh, a jail or institution would intervene, as soon as I picked up again, it would be off to the races as though nothing ever changed. And after some time, I found Alcoholics Anonymous. And some years later, I found Cocaine Anonymous. And that's where I found a fellowship of individuals that thought like I do, that understood me. And Cocaine Anonymous is uh, it's a non-drug specific fellowship. Doesn't matter if you're an alcoholic, heroin addict, cocaine addict. So it's a level of understanding that I've been looking for all my life. When you say that uh, there were different, you said there were different things that uh, ended up going wrong for you and uh, you turned, and that you turned to. Um, was it just cocaine and alcohol or were you meaning that there were other drugs as well? There were other drugs. Um, alcohol was my, my preference because it was quick, it was easy. But in, uh, in a clutch, whatever worked, whatever would make me stop feeling the way I did. But cocaine, in terms of drugs, cocaine was the biggest, besides alcohol. Yeah, over the years, there was, uh, there was a lot of cocaine involved. Uh, when did you start taking cocaine? Oh, when I was 18, 19 years old. What, uh, and how long were you taking it for? On and off. Uh, on and off through my through my life right up until 1999 you know and the the cocaine definitely stopped working but I did continue uh, with the alcohol smoking weed uh, using barbiturates whatever would work at the time and about that time is when I started hitting detox hospitals uh, and jails Something had to change. Uh, prison or jails? Jails. And short time in prison as well. Um, I mean, what, uh, in terms of, uh, you, so you, uh, stopped about, you're, you've been sober from cocaine for 18 or 19 years? Well, 19, 20 years. 19, 20 years. Yeah. Um, how did you stop? I stopped, I stopped using harder drugs because they were very much working against me. I was getting scared, I was getting paranoid. Um, plain and simple, they stopped working for me. You know, uh, drugs stopped working. Alcohol had stopped working, but I didn't know how to stop it. Did you go to a treatment center or? I, I went to treatment. I was able to stay clean and sober for a good long stretch. And once I picked up again, it was that, uh, that first drink, the first drug that took me right back to where I was you know, the day I quit. And finally I found a group of people that understood me, understood parts of me that I didn't understand. Uh, that was though not 19, 20 years ago, or? I found recovery 19, 20 years ago. Um, it, it worked very well for me. I wasn't working very well for it. I wasn't doing my part. So have you actually been sober from cocaine since then? Yes. Oh, but you went back to other things? Yes. Okay, I just wanted to make clear. Uh, so that did help you though stop with cocaine? Cocaine. Uh, cocaine and uh, uh, all the other hard drugs, yes. Just going back a little bit, what was it about cocaine that you just kept, about this drug that it just kept, keeps, kept coming back to you? 
it gave me the ability to do more of what I was doing without it. I could, I could uh, drink longer. I could stay up longer than everybody else. I could continue my own irrational behavior longer. And it just, uh, it fueled my own fire. Did it though also destroy relationships, destroy friendships? I mean, what? It destroyed everything it could, yes. You know, relationships, friendships, uh, the relationship that I had with uh, myself, with my higher power, uh, it destroyed any and everything. And I've seen cocaine not just destroy people's lives, I've seen it send people to prison, I've seen it send uh, people to institutions, I've seen people that have lost everything, and of late, a lot of people losing their lives. What do you think about this? This uh, in Milwaukee count. Were you in Milwaukee out of curiosity during all this time? Uh, Dane County in Milwaukee. Dane yes. County in Milwaukee. Okay. Um, I mean, seeing this, it's a uh, increase in deaths in uh, cocaine-related deaths. 2012, there were 34. Mm -hmm. In 2018, they're still adding up that total. The medical examiner tells me, but it's at 163 right now. And just even here in 2019, so far, there have been 19 cocaine-related deaths. And those numbers are, the numbers are obscene. People should not be dying at this rate. Um, there's help out there. There's, I don't think the message is making it to the people that need it the most. I think that is part of the struggle. There's a lot of focus on the opiate addiction and not much focus on everything else that's going on that's killing people at an equally rapid rate. Well, a lot of the problem, obviously, I mean, has to be do with cocaine is getting mixed with some of these also more powerful drugs, more fatal drugs. Sure, people are using cocaine and they're using heroin, speedballing, it's killing them. Um, but a lot of cocaine users don't even know it, isn't that? The, that it's sometimes it's being mixed with other things. True. It is true. A lot of people out there just selling the the best high possible with no regard for the life it might take. Uh, what what do you think? Uh, I mean, you you got through it. You're sober today, of everything. Yeah, I have recovered. What? How does that feel? And what do you have to say to others who are still struggling out there? Um, so that they don't become a statistic like these others. How does it feel? It's by far a much better way of living. And what, uh, what I have to say to others, if I can do this, anybody can, because I believed for a long, long time that there was no possible way I was going to be able to get clean and sober. I was convinced I was going to die. And I found, I found, by the grace of God, Cocaine Anonymas and other 12-step 12 12 programs that worked for me. You know, I found people that finally understood. I think a lot of it is about getting the message out. I think the media, um, law enforcement, the more people that the more people that have the capability of letting people know where to find help, where to find something that might work. It's not all about making your way to a hospital or to a jail or to a morgue. You know, there are people out there that care. There's 12-step uh, groups that honestly want to help. I mean, that is, that's my true mission, to be of service to the next individual that wants help. Anything else you'd like to add? You know, what can we do to continue getting the message out? It's important. You know, it's important. It's all about keeping people alive. It's not. It's not about uh, this emphasis and focus on the war on drugs. Right now, keep people alive. Get people the help that they need. Uh, show people that there is a path. You know, Cocaine Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous. There's no fee, there's no membership. We're just there to support the next individual. And it works.